Hello chess friends and welcome to the Adolf's Chess Channel and welcome to the Magnus Carlsen Invitational Tournament in 2021. We're now in the second day and I think from this tournament so far the most attractive game was the game between Wesley So and Levon Aronian. This game was really really incredible and uh, if you don't know uh, recently Levon Aronian joined the US uh, national chess team so he's now a uh, landsman from of course Wesley so I think the US uh, will the USA will have a, such a strong national team and this wasn't a great welcome by Wesley so uh, for Levon Aronian because in this game Wesley so played in immortal immortal chess game I think this game will be written in chess history book as the Wesley so immortal this game was really really wild and uh, I'm sorry my if, if I'm revealing you a little bit the result but the point of this game is simply not to keep uh, this result as a secret this game has such a such a beautiful value i think for for all of us chess lovers it had some of course theoretical novelty some beautiful attacking elements and that's why i decided to show you this game it was really really a beauty by vastly so so let's check out now the game uh, here vastly opened with the move d4 uh, 11 uh, responds with the move knight to f6 we have c4 e6 and now knight to c3 and after bishop to b4 we have the nimzo indian on the board so there are many great ways but in my opinion, uh, what the Nimzo Indian defense player doesn't like is when white is not playing the move a3. Whenever white plays the move a3, I think a Nimzo Indian player will simply take bishop, take c3, and b takes c3, and will try to keep the game positional, will try to maybe build a fortress on dark squares with d6, uh, and then maybe break through with e5, or immediately play c5, b6. So black will put many pawns on dark squares because black gave up the dark square bishop. But here after the move queen to c2, it's the so-called classical variation of the Nimzo Indian, white delays the situation if you take of course immediately now uh, we can take out with the queen and the problem is now i think for black many times in the nimzo indian uh, white has the trouble uh, where to go with the dark school bishop the dark school bishop is sometimes blocked out after potential e3 move then the dark school bishop is not so uh, good but still it, i think in this particular scenario you see if you take immediately if you don't get challenged with move a3 then uh, you'd gain and you didn't gain anything i think from black's perspective white is simply continuing the game with the bishop pair and it's a it's a bad game i think for black from this point on so i think as i said a nimzo indian defense player doesn't like uh generally the continuation without the move a3 and that's exactly what vesley do so does here after castling he is playing simply knight to f3 and he's like saying to Levin, if you want to take bishop take c3 still i'm going to take out with the queen and then uh i still have of course opportunities to attack and pin your uh, knight with bishop to g5 and i will have uh, maybe a great great uh, bishop pair in the continuation so i think uh, this classical variation is very good if you have trouble maybe to play against the Nimto, this is perfectly fine here 11 Aronian plays d5 because uh, of course we want to challenge the center there are always these tensions with knight to e4 uh, continuing our pressure against the knight on c3 or after c takes d5 knight to d5 and the problem is now white still needs many tempi with e3 bishop to d3 and then castling in order to secure the king uh, really by castling so white still needs many many and moves in order to secure the king so here bishop to g5 played by uh, Wesley so we have h6 the idea about this move h6 is to decoy here the uh, the bishop to the king side uh, to h4 then of course the bishop can never retreat to f4 e3 or maybe here to d2 to this side of the board sort of in order to protect this pin on on, on c3 so here after move h4 we have now d takes c4 and it's a natural idea because um, we have seen many times this line it may seem to you like a strange idea to give up now the centralized pawn of course uh wesley so continues with the move e4 but what um, what um, leveron and had here uh, as a plan is the move g5 after the move bishop to g3 now b5 and this move is actually an inaccuracy by uh, Levin Aronian. Uh, it seems like a strange idea, uh, a great idea, pardon me, because you cannot take out the pawn, the knight is pinned, and still we're continuing with, with some ideas. Bishop takes c3 after queen to c3, knight to e4. A better idea, instead of this move b5, you see now why this move is a problem, 
is the continuation with the move g4 g4 leads now into a very complicated game uh, white would be forced to play something like e5 or maybe uh, even to play knight to d2 after knight to d2 black could maybe take out the queen but actually it wouldn't be a good idea i think then queenside castling is very dangerous and you see now white has activated all of the pieces white has really a nice setup uh, knights are out bishops are very dangerous now we're threatening even knight to c4 discovered attack uh, by the rook on the queen so there are now many many great attacking opportunities for white and still uh, black has weakened i think a little bit the pawn structure in front of the king too much we could even break through with h3 and open maybe somehow the h file so the king is secured although white is down a pawn but i still think that white has here a pleasant game so black in this particular scenario shouldn't take out the pawn uh, i think maybe normal development with knight to c6 and then maybe to challenge the uh, pawn on uh, d4 would be a more natural idea so you don't want to take out with the queen you see when the queen gets centralized then the queen can be also an object of white's attack but as i said here the, the evolution is about equal and as i said i could show you now many many lines uh, for white for black but that's also not the point of this video so as i said in my opinion g4 slightly uh, more accurate here for black uh in the game as we said 11 on and plays the move b5 and the, the problem about this move b5 is that actually you have opened now this long diagonal against the rook and here uh that's why Vesley so plays the move e5 here we have knight to h5 and now queen to e4 and this next move now for black is really really hard to find so here uh, Levin Aronian plays the move queen to d5 a new inaccuracy sort of so the evaluation is slightly better still for white nothing dramatically but uh, as I said there is a better continuation and it's sort of a must move it gives you I think a pleasant game an equal game for both sides it's actually the move bishop to d7 sacrificing the rook it's really hard to find it's of course a rapid game uh, you don't have so much time to calculate everything bishop to d7 is more accurate because if you take uh, that's the main issue here then you are in serious trouble here bishop to c6 will first happen and you see now the queen is a little bit endangered here you have only one square you have a queen takes a7 and now bishop to f3 after g takes f3 knight to c6 queen to b7 counter attack against the knight but now queen to d4 this is uh the great move that um I think black can play you cannot of course take the knight bishop the seat will happen so in order to secure the king white needs now to play the move bishop to e2 uh, to bring the king somehow here maybe to f1 then to g2 secure the king because the king is really really in danger here and now it would be time to play bishop to c3 again b takes c3 is not good because you get queen to c3 and you lose the rook so here white needs to play king to f1 secure the king and now uh, after bishop to b2 attacking the rook maybe rook to d1 uh, counterattack but now queen to c5 uh, could happen and i think uh this would be a much much better continuation of course for black that's actually the continuation if we take out the rook that's what the whole point uh there are many of course sidelines i decided to show you really the main threats of of this uh, scenario so as i said after potential uh here bishop to d7 you couldn't actually take out um uh, take out the rook actually the best way here for white would be the move bishop to c4 i'm sorry if i'm complicating things too much but uh, i think still think that uh, sometimes you can try this out sometimes you can try this complicated line and maybe surprise your opponent maybe try to uh, decoy him a little bit try to get him into some uh, into some unknown territory here after the move bishop to c4 you see now bish uh, you cannot actually take now this idea queen takes a8 would work as we after move queen to b7 would be um, this move queen to b7 would be attacking the bishop on before i hope you realize the differences so in order to make something to happen black would be forced now to play the move bishop to c6 and i'm showing you this um, this lines because i think this is a great game this game is really really incredible so uh, that's why i wanted to show it really really uh in the best way that i can so this is really a mortal game i i think uh, we should really see all of these lines that are possible bishop to c6 now queen to g4 would be sort of a uh, main line here uh, in order to counterattack somehow now bishop to f3 here queen to f3 and now again this idea queen to d4 with the idea to play bishop to c3 would be the main threat of black but now after bishop to b5 here i think 
uh, everything is uh, very well protected you cannot again take out the rook that's the main issue because you get again bishop takes c3 followed with queen to c3 but the evaluation here as as i said is equal for both sides that was really really wild you cannot calculate of course this kind of stuff in a in a rapid game it's really wild so as i said bishop to d7 would be sort of move that uh, would help out here Levin or Lennon. Actually, the move queen to d5 is a huge, huge blunder. So after the move queen to d5, here uh Vesta saw goals with queen to g4. Levin or Lennon plays knight to g7. He's trying now uh, to play the move f5, attacking the queen. In the game, bishop to e2. Vesta saw develops the bishop, wants now finally to secure the king by castling, and now comes this move f5. But actually, this move f5 is a new inaccuracy by or a blunder, uh, call it like you want, but uh, here it's not a good move here for Levon Aronian. F5, knight to c6 would be much, much better attacking at least somehow uh, this position. You see still white cannot take out the pawn on b5. Uh, maybe casting would be now an idea. Queen, uh, queen to h3 and similar stuff at attacking at least maybe here the weak h6 pawn. So as I said, still this would be a complicated game, but after the move f5, basically it's now a one-way ticket here for white. It's a lost game here for Levin Ronan. Incredible stuff that actually this is a bad move. If you see this position like this, it seems like a great move because what Levin Ronan probably hoped for here is the move e takes f6. And after e takes f6, the main threat is now the discovered attack with the move e5. And I think here again, white is in serious trouble. But here Vesta Sol showed really his great attacking skills. He played h3 and it's really wild because uh, of course g4 happened, the fork against the queen and the knight, but that was actually part of the plan of Vesta Sol. Queen to h6, a great move, sacrificing the knight. G takes f3, bishop to f3, and now queen to d4. You don't have time actually to take out here uh, the rook again. Uh, that's the main issue uh, this uh, diagonal is open but again this idea bishop takes c3 followed with queen to c3 is the main threat so that's why Vesley so secured the king he has now a powerful bishop pair and here Vesley so uh, pardon me level and has to play the move c6 locking the light force but now rook to d1 you see how Vesley activates now the pieces after the move queen to b6 here comes i think one of the greatest moments of the game and although this move was evaluated as an inaccuracy by the engine i still think that the best is so played it um uh, immediately because he saw a great line and actually that's what i hate about this computer evaluation sometimes sometimes you have i don't know a plus five evaluation and then you make a move and then you have suddenly a plus three evaluation still the engine will show it as a mistake or maybe as an inaccuracy but in my opinion I, st I still think that Vesley saw, saw all of these lines and actually he decided to play here a little bit for the fans, sort of, because the best move here would be simply to play bishop to h4. That's, let's see now the main threat by the engine when you can also be the judge of the next move by, uh, by Vesley. So this wasn't played at the game, but uh, I wanted to show really how I sometimes hate this uh, computer relation. Bishop to h4 leads now into a line, knight to d7, then bishop to f6 is the main threat, knight to f6, uh, e takes f6, and now rook to f7 has to be played in order to defend this position, still maybe a four could be an opportunity or maybe the move knight to e2 is also great still white is so much better knight to f4 will happen still we have opportunities maybe to double up the rook somehow on the default so every every move basically for white is perfectly fine but Wesley saw so instead of this move bishop to h4 played a monster move and as i said it's evaluated in inaccuracy but i actually like this move more because it's a simply a move for the fans and it's the move uh here after the move knight to, uh pardon me here after the move uh queen to b6 knight to e4 by Vesta so sacrificing a new piece i think this is more attractive this is simply a move for the fans as i said i really love this move uh here in f4 it's not an option again you get this idea knight to g5 or knight to f6 a serious threat so it's a game over uh this is not an option and here uh Levin Ronan decides to take f takes e4 bishop to e4 and now you see there is this threat uh, queen to h7 after king to f7 bishop to g6 then you have to move here your king uh, from the defense of the knight and will simply take out the knight then this bishop will come into the game and the cool part of white setup is that uh with the white rook has cut off uh here a 
potential escape route for uh, black skin so it would be game over here for leveron if you don't protect here the large uh, the long diagonal on light score so that's why rook to f5 uh, was played by uh, leveron and he wants to stay with the knight in front of the king because the knight is actually a better defensive piece than a rook so here's uh, level one and sacrifices the rook uh, for the exchange but to stay in order to stay with you with the king uh, with the knight in front of the king here uh Vesta so place uh, bishop to f5 we have e takes f5 and now a new stunner in every move level uh, pardon me Vesta so found great great attacking opportunities maybe it's time now for you to pause the video and try to see now the best next move here for uh for, for white it's a great move uh, maybe not so easy to see but if you uh, are into this attacking chess uh, then of course peace activity peace uh, finding the best squares for your pieces is actually the main idea of attacking chess uh, attack counter attack so placing the pieces on the best square uh, improvements of minor pieces uh, peace activity so these are the basic elements of attacking chess here vastly so found a new stunner here e6 so there are now of course maybe two choices what to do uh, of course one of the best ways simply to play bishop to f8 simply defending this position like a lion here uh, at least trying to get some pieces but let's see now also the possible continuations after potential maybe bishop to e6 then uh, here bishop to e5 that's the main threat that's that's the point of the e6 move we have now a new square for our bishop and the problem is now always here for black the lack of development these pieces are out of game they haven't participated in the game so here uh, Vesso has great at attacking opportunities here, if you try bishop to f8 to get your bishop back then actually bishop to g7 works because after bishop takes the g7 queen to e6 and now you get simply to checkmate it here rook to e1 will happen you cannot protect both of the squares you cannot protect the e7 and you cannot also protect the d7 square what we want to do is now get one of these rooks on the seventh rank and then play queen to f7 queen to g7 maybe even queen to h, uh, h7 checkmate so here uh, you can try maybe knight to d7 but we'll simply take if you try here something like i don't know knight to uh, a6 we simply play rook to e7 and it's game over so in this position if you take what take out with the knight the pawn again uh, similar stuff queen to g6 with the, the with the same idea maybe knight to g7 again bishop to e5 you could again cover but again bishop to g7 bishop takes and now rook to e1 again the same threat with the idea to play rook to e2 uh, rook to e7 this is the main threat i want you really to memorize this threat because it's very important now to see this threat in the continuation of of, of this tactical sequence that vessel soul has prepared here effort move e6 here eleven on and play simply bishop to f8 tries to defend here uh, this position like a line and now of course this move bishop to e5 tact was really the point of the move e6 here we have c5 and now comes bishop to g7 again the uh, here if you try knight to e6 now immediately uh, now to take discover attack then queen to h8 will happen so you cannot uh, do this you cannot take out this pawn that's the main issue and the cool part of this tactic is that this pawn is very very important you see now why queen to h8 king to f7 and now queen to f6 again you want to move here your king queen to g6 again you're covering with something again bishop to g7 knight to g7 and again the same tactic appears here again with the idea to play here rook to e7 so this is very important as i said uh, uh here vessel so found really outstanding ways to attack these positions here after move e5 here uh Levin Ronan didn't take out the pawn he tried now the move c5 in order to take out maybe here the queen with the queen uh the pawn on e6 but now bishop to g7 bishop to g7 and now it's time for you again to find the best next move it's really really great move again by vessel so i really love this game it's a beautiful chess game so again pause the video okay okay here the best move is actually the move e7 and this is really wild because if you take bishop takes h6 then we can simply promote and now uh, we can build a battery we can also take out the bishop on c8 so it's game over uh here uh here for for black so really wild stuff this pawn as i said is very important e7 creating really some madness on the board bishop to d7 now um uh level running is trying to defend of course the e expert we have queen to h5 preparing e8 queen to c6 a force move we have to defend this position and now rook from f to e1 we're at again 
trying the promotion here on on e8 bishop to e8 if you try knight to a6 to maybe cover the square with your rook it's not so good you get simply rook to d7 then queen to d7 and then here the promotion so you lose the rook you get checked and it probably here with the rook and the queen so that's why uh here uh, 11 running has to play bishop to e8 but now comes rook to d8 look how vastly so attacks this position this heavy artillery the rooks on the d and e file are really wild in the game uh, knight to a6 finally 11 ronan is trying to get some pieces back into the defense but it's simply too late because here comes a new stunner a new beautiful move rook to e6 deflecting the queen from the defense of the bishop let's see now what happens if you try queen takes uh, rook on e6 then you get rook to e8 uh, here rook takes queen to e8 queen to h5 if you try to cover uh, with the bishop then here the uh, queen to uh, uh, e8 with the promotion here can happen and the uh, cool part is here you're of course covering the e1 square that's the main tactical goal that black is hoping for here maybe a back rank checkmate on e1 that's actually what levin Ravenan would love to play but it's not possible it would be game over so as i said great again you move rook to e6 deflecting the queen from the defense of the bishop and levin Ravenan tries queen to d7 but now we have rook takes a8 the problem is now queen to d1 doesn't work as the queen is covering the square so that's why knight to c7 uh, trying to get the new defender into the game but now rook to d8 we have knight to e6 rook takes e8 here knight to f8 and now uh, here uh, vastly so simply takes rook takes f8 it's game over in this position level on and resign but let's see now if you try bishop to f8 then you get queen to g6 here again you can cover but now again e8 the promotion and it was really, really wild it was game over as we said after the move <coughs> rook to f8 in this position level on and had enough and he resigned so it wasn't a great welcome uh, to the national team of the USA by Wesley So for Levon Ronan, but it was an outstanding, outstanding and beautiful chess game. I really hope that you enjoyed it like I did. I really enjoyed recently Wesley So games. Uh, he's really the guy that I'm following a little bit more than the other players uh, among, of course, uh, Magnus Carlsen, Alireza. I also follow this are maybe my favorite three grandmasters now these days. I don't want to separate, of course, the players, but in my opinion, Vesley So is always, always uh, the favorite to win win one of these tournaments. And I wish him all of the best in the continuation of the tournament. It was such a such a beautiful performance. Also, although um, Vesley So is not in the lead of this tournament, but uh, still, of course, he'll probably make it to the top eight. And then you don't want to face, of course, uh, Vesley So in the quarterfinal stage because if he plays like this, uh, you can prepare to resign immediately. So, okay, I hope to, that you enjoyed this game. As I said as, as i did if you want to see more games from this tournament check out my uh, two games that i've analyzed so far here are the links and if you like this content don't forget to subscribe to my channel see you soon with some more videos and uh, what to say chess is the best of course